and then uh, you can stop recording and start again recording. Yes, Reza? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay. How, okay. How long is it going to be? Uh, I believe about three hours, like two hours will be the theory. And then we do the questions and answers. Uh, so it's, it's a long conference. So take, take enough uh, uh, <laughs> refreshment. What, take the snacks uh, now. <laughs> it's, it's take now, take now, yes. yes. Take the honey, take uh, whatever you want, you need. Yes. Yes, and then the questions you can put on the chat area. You see on the on the bottom of the screen, it's a, a button with a chat. So you can put me the questions on the chat because uh, during the conference, I may uh, block your audio uh, because the sounds of your room come in, uh, inside the, the conference room. So, so it's better to to, to mute the, or your audio, but you can send the, the questions in the chat. Yes? Okay, L let's make a test here. Uh, test for questions. Questions here. Okay. Okay, do you see the chat area on the right part of the screen? You click first on the bottom on the icon chat. And then uh, you'll see on the right, it's a um, it's a column, white column. So there you can uh, you can uh, put your questions. Uh, may make a test and write your questions there. Okay. Okay, like this gallery view. Okay, you have we have also your brush from Nepal. Scott Oland from United States. I'm looking Mirta Bueno from the Dominican Republic. Very good, Sophie from Qatar. Okay, many good people. <laughs> okay. Okay, Roberto, Roberto Rodriguez from Argentina. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. Okay, so many people. Okay, I'll give you a few more minutes to, to, to settle and maybe a few more people are coming. And meanwhile, I will prepare. Oh yes, I see here on the right. Uh, uh, today's date is uh, June two. <laughs> June two. Uh, okay. So I see the messages here. Very good on the chat. Very good. Very good. Okay. Let me. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Oops. Oh yeah, okay. Good. I'll close this one. Okay. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will uh, mute um, you all. So I'll block your audio to have more, like more quiet, more silence. But when we'll come to the, um, the questions part, uh, at the break or at the end, you can unmute yourself. You have a button there. You can uh, uh, take out the, the blockage on the audio. Yes? Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. I see also Professor Mamdouh Abdul Rahman from Egypt. Very good. 
Uh, Al Katani from from Saudi Arabia. Yes, very good. United States, also uh, Gugu, and very very good. Okay, now um, I think uh, uh, we we are okay, and uh, the people who will come later they can join also later. No problem. Okay, and. Um, Let's start. I will try to do the share screen. I hope it will work to show you my PowerPoint. Okay, okay, okay. This one it's okay. Share. Okay. Can you see my screen? Make a sign if you can see the screen. You can see the screen, yes? Okay. Good. You see it? Do you see my screen with the B products? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very good. So I'll start. Uh, now it's a large screen. Yes. Okay. So uh, we have here all the B products which can be used against the virus. Here in the middle is the virus, like a, like a drawing, just. And um, there are a lot of scientific articles which um, uh, confirm that the B products are antiviral directly or indirectly. Okay, so B pollen, you'll see also other B products, the propolis, honey, real jelly, and so on. Then uh, a few ideas of this lecture, an introduction with some ideas, then main causes of the causes of COVID-19, why beekeepers do not die of COVID-19, we'll discuss about this too, prevention and treatment uh, with uh, beehive products and complementary methods. So a few ideas on the introduction. We know from our AP therapy, AP therapy is used for over 6,000 years. And they, there is so much experience, so much literature on how the bee products help our body, our cells. There are literally over 10,000 scientific articles on how the bee products works for our health. And most of these articles, most of this knowledge can apply also on the immune system. And this is one of the key elements in the treatment of COVID-19 and in the prevention of COVID-19. Here is on the website, uh, my website, aptherapy.com. I made a special page. Many of you uh, know this page already, where uh, there are over 100 uh, articles which prove that the B products are direct in and indirect antivirals with broad spectrum, which means, uh, uh, for, for example, propolis kills, destroys not only uh, a certain virus, but many other viruses. So same is for B-venom and so on. So here are just a few print screen from this uh, web page, abstracts and articles on api virology. And I really suggest you to, to come and to look to this uh, web page later on. And you can download each of these articles. Each of these articles are in form of PDF. So then you can start uh, study at home. Then uh, we have not only uh, the, um, uh, the pollen, but we have also the bee bread. Besides royal gel, you have also apilarnil, the drone larvae. We use also, we can use also beeswax in the prevention and treatment of COVID-19. We can use also beehive air. And of course, propolis here is honeydew honey. So practically almost all main bee products can be used in one way or another. And here it's a few ideas. Melitin is antiviral, uh, but also polyphenols, organic acids and enzymes, they can work also directly or indirectly against the virus. The stem cells, which, which can get stimulated by the drone larvae and by the la royal jelly, they will help the regeneration of our body when we are infected. Okay, so, um, okay. And then we have volatile substances, which we find mainly in uh, propolis and beeswax. There is a study done in Germany about this. And all these substances are helping against the virus. Now, uh, the body, if you look to the scientific literature, you'll find that the bee products, because of their composition, they are so good for all our organs in the body. For example, honey is very rich in carbohydrates. It gives us energy. Polyphenols, they protect us. Also, it helps our breathing. Organic acids, and so on and so on. All these substances, 
is just a very, very short introduction in this composition of B products because there are over 2000 different substances in the B products which help the body. Okay. Now, how the B products helps directly the immune system? Let's go uh, step by step. One of them is that uh, we know that the nutrients, of course, the white blood cells and all the cells from the immune system, they need also nutrients. They need protective substances like antioxidants. Uh, they need helping substances against all kinds of uh, dangerous microorganisms, substances that, that help the blood and lymph fluidity. We well, will insist about this because the functioning of the immune system needs a very good fluidity, like the, the blood must be very fluid, not, not thick, not like, like creamy. Okay. Now, what says the world statistic, uh, at worldwide statistics? At least 95% of the world population is okay or have just temporary medical problems with COVID-19. Uh, and then uh, if at least 95% of this population is okay, uh, it means that uh, the immune system and the rest of the body of these people is okay. Why only about 5% of the population have problems? Uh, if you look to the, the drawings, it's something like this. So 95% of the population is okay. Only 5% are having problems. So we can focus on maintaining the health of these people, but also on treating these people. Here I have one, uh, one uh, saying from Sun Tzu, the Chinese, the famous Chinese writer, who wrote in The Art of War, know the enemy and know yourself. In a hundred battles, you will never be in peril. So there are two factors here, the enemy, in our case, the virus, and ourself or the patient. Okay, so these two parts must be known very, very well. So if we know all characteristic of the virus, how it invades our body, what is doing inside the body, and we know the, how the body can respond to this uh, attack, then we can heal this disease. So let's start with details on ourselves or on the patient, if you want. So main causes of the COVID-19. Uh, besides the virus itself, one of the main causes is the low, the weak immune system, as it is logical and everybody understood this. So what could be the causes of this low immune system? First of all, let's look a bit to the structure of the immune system. You see we have here the tonsils inside the, the tonsils, uh, pharyngeal tonsils, nasal tonsils, then we have the thymus here, we have the bone marrow, red bone marrow, which produces the white blood cells, also the uh, red blood cells and the uh, platelets. So practically uh, most, all most important uh, uh, elements in the blood are produced in the bones here, very deep inside the body. Then we have the spleen, the pyre patches and all kinds of ganglions around the body. So Practically, they, these are cells, okay? So these cells, they need a lot of uh, different things to function properly. So, but there are unfortunately causes which, which makes our immune system uh, weak. And uh, let's look to some of them. Emotional stress, uh, lack of joy, hate, irascibility, worries, obsession, jealousy, depression, fear. The most dangerous are depression and fear. And fear is unfortunately created a lot by the mass media and uh, the people get depressed. If you look to the, to the I, what I said uh, before, 95% of the people are okay, but 5% they have problems. And usually these 5% are old people and old people already have depressions. And if we trigger more, we activate more this depression, then the people get a lot of other diseases or they get uh, even worse forms of COVID-19. So this uh, affects not only the body, this emotional stress, the emotional stress affects the lungs, the kidneys, the adrenal glands, the pancreas and so on and so on, but also the immune system. We know already there are scientific studies which shows that the, the power, the function of the immune system decreases like 50% if we are depressed or if we have fear. So emotion, it's a big, big thing. Uh, just a few funny things here to, to memorize better this idea. None of these bad emotions is good 
if we want to fight COVID-19. So maybe it is good to get a good psychologist or to look into some psychotherapy techniques to, to uh, eliminate, to neutralize these problems. Then we have physical stress, weather related stress, like it's too much coldness, too much wetness, too much heat, too much wind, too much dryness. So in Chinese medicine, this is according to Wu Xing, we have too much heat, is not good. Too much rain, not good. Too much dryness, not good. Too much cold, not good. Too much wind, it's also not good. So we must protect the body against all these factors. And uh, then too much physical work, exhaustion is also not good. Too much external pollutants, like air pollution. We know in Wuhan, in China, in Lombardia, in Italy, in New York, in all major cities, there is usually a lot of pollution. And there are the uh, people which are dying most. Also chlorinating and fluorinated water, all kind of chemicals and toxins in the, body, in the environment like in glyphosate in agriculture, or antibiotics which are coming from the food in our body. Then chemical stress, it's not only from outside external pollutants, but also from internal pollutants. If we have constipation, we have kidney infections, we have lung diseases, we cannot eliminate the toxin which are volatile toxins, skin diseases. Okay, so internal pollutants is also a good, uh, an important thing. And even people which are having vegetarian diet, sometimes then they have constipation or kidney problems, so they can not eliminate the toxins from the body. Then overall dehydration, lack of water, lack of oxygen, lack of nutrients and micronutrients, it's also a problem. Biological stress, other pathogens, dangerous viruses, bacteria, fungi and or parasites besides the SARS-CoV-2, okay? Lack of clean and well oxygenated air with enough negative ions, fatigue, physical or emotional, <laughs> our battery is almost uh, gone. Um, then poor blood flow, this is a very important cause because it leads to various comorbidities like diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, kidney and lung diseases, insufficient and or low quality sleep, advanced age, when you have problems with the telomeres, also a, a low immune system, usually people, old people, they have a Im low immune system if they do not know how to, to prolong their life with uh, B products, <laughs> okay, and other methods. Insufficient regeneration, damaged cells and tissues. This is also a very important factor because even if uh, the virus comes into our body, it destroys some cells, it creates thrombosis and so on and so on, if the cells can regenerate quickly, then it's no problem for us or the patient. Comorbidities, which leads to many uh, other problems of the immune system. Here with some graphs, uh, the, here are uh, some of the first uh, causes of the poor immune system. Then we can see that not only these causes, there are many other causes like advanced age, internal pollution, poor regeneration, so on. And then uh, poor diet, poor blood flow, capillary fragility. This is a big one and I will explain later. Also dehydration, coldness, lack of oxygen. So many of these causes are present. And what is interesting, one of the cause can cause or aggravate another cause. For example, poor diet, you see this, uh, this uh, file, it goes to uh, free radicals. So if we eat like McDonald's fried food, we introduce in our body free radicals. And free radicals are a cause of low immune system. Okay, so other example, if you have too much stress, we have uh, sleep disorders. But also we have uh, internal and external pollution because too much stress, for example, creates constipation. And so on and so on. Lack of oxygen is related to advanced age and vice versa. So all these causes influence other causes. See here, so it's, it's an interactivity, it's an interaction between, between all these causes. Capillary fragility, it's also related to poor regeneration. Okay, and so on and so on. So practically it's so complex. And uh, if you speak with an immunologist, they will present you such drawings. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. The idea is that we need to neutralize, eliminate all causes of a low immune system if we want to get a good functioning of the immune system. This is not an easy task, but it is possible if we have enough patience, goodwill, a complete, a good diagnostic and a disciplined patient 
to follow the rules and the principles and what you say. So practically, we need to make, first of all, a diagnostic to check to the patient if they have stress, free radicals, poor blood flow, and so on and so on. And then we make a list of all these causes, and then we do our best to neutralize step-by-step uh, step each of these causes. Okay, second major cause of COVID-19 is this, the presence of these comorbidities, cardiovascular disorders, diabetes, pulmonary problems, obesity, cancer, other infections. So these are the main killers of people with COVID-19, not the vi virus itself. And uh, cardiovascular disease like comorbidities, of course, if we do not have a good blood flow, the, if the heart is not functioning properly, or the arteries, the capillaries, the veins are too fragile, uh, then we are in problem. Too much cholesterol in the blood. Problems in the endothelial cells. You know, this is an artery, a section in an artery. And this, uh, the main problem in COVID-19 is here at this level with the endothelial cells, uh, which is inside the artery, okay? And um, this is present in the arteries, also in the heart. And uh, when the virus comes, it attacks also this part and the people may get even a heart attack, a heart infarctus, when the, the virus multiplies in this uh, uh, inner lining of the heart. Another very important uh, uh, cause, as I told you, is the capillary fragility. When the fragility, uh, sorry, I have had here one mobile. Sorry, sorry, I'll mute my <laughs> mobile to have no problems. Okay. So uh, when people are having the capillaries or the arterioles, the walls here are too fragile, they break too easy, break easy, then we have bleeding, micro bleeding, micro hemorrhages, like here in this image. And these micro hemorrhages must be blocked by the body, otherwise we lose the blood. So the body comes in these areas and they uh, come with, uh, with um, fibrinogen and with fibrin and it will block the bleeding and then it creates thrombus or blood clot. Okay, so this, this is a big problem. Now, the cause of this uh, capillary fragility, some of the causes, lack of vitamin C, lack of polyphenols, lack of good quality nutrients, excess of sugar, free radicals, etc. Okay, other, uh, this capillary fragility, like in this example, goes to, uh, leads to advanced periodontitis and the people are losing the, the teeth, like these young people, they drank too much Coca-Cola, too much Coca-Cola with too much sugar. So uh, this is just an example, but this bleeding can be anywhere in the body, including the lungs, in the kidneys, everywhere. So uh, I believe that the main cause of COVID-19 is this capillary fragility. And we can fix with apitherapy this capillary fragility. Another cause, another type of comorbidity is diabetes type 2. And of course, here is related to the consumption of bad food, too much sugar, but also too much dairy products, too much sedentarism, like lack of activity, okay, which leads to toxins in the body. But we can fix this, and we know from apitherapy, we, we use propolis, we use royal jelly, even honey we can use in diabetes, special types of honey. Uh, then obesity clear cause of uh, death in uh, COVID-19. And also, if you look uh, to the statistics, many people which are dying of COVID-19, they are dying together with COVID-19, but the main cause is obesity, which blocks the heart and so on and so on. Then cancer can be also a cause. Many people which are old age, they have tumors. And then, of course, uh, the immune system is low because of the fight with the cancer. So the immune system <coughs> cannot fight anymore with on, on several, uh, cannot have several battles on several battlegrounds simultaneously. Other infections, this is a main cause because we have at least 10 times more viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites in our body than our own cells. So practically uh, we are an universe of microorganisms and these ones, when they get bad, they can make a lot of problems. So, same thing with the other infections. Comorbidities like 60, 70 years of age or more. This is also another cause of uh, another part of the comorbidity. Diabetes here, some scientific studies, I go quickly on this ones. It's just 
to, to show you that uh, the scientists are proving this. Diabetes and immune system. Immune system goes down if uh, people have diabetes. Uh, people with uh, old age, 65 or older, they have problems with COVID-19, another article here. Now, the big question I already uh, told you at the beginning, are beekeepers protected against uh, COVID-19? And the answer, the big, big answer is yes. As far as I know, until today, from all over the world, I asked colleagues from many, many countries. So until today, uh, from thousands and thousands and thousands of beekeepers, uh, by the way, there are around 7 million beekeepers in the world. I know about only one case, and that case is not 100% uh, sure that that person died of COVID-19, a beekeeper. So beekeepers are really protected against COVID-19. And uh, there are many reasons why the beekeepers are protected and we can discuss them later. So the idea is that we can take these lessons from the beekeepers. Practically all doctors in the world should look to the beekeepers and uh, uh, learn their secrets, why they are survivors. And keep in mind that most of the beekeepers, uh, they are old age, like above the average, uh, because most of the people go to beekeeping when they retire. So, uh, and when they are older age, they should have more problems because they are old people, but uh, they have no problems. On the contrary, they are like younger people and they have a very good health. Okay, so we can, uh, the beekeepers, what is characteristic? They use bee venom and all other main beehive products. And the bee venom, the bee stings, even if they gather these things like uh, last year in uh, September, October, November, uh, they, they have a stronger immunity because the bee venom, the bee stings activates the immune system, overall immune system, for example, the lymphocytes. And then these lymphocytes can fight better uh, other enemies uh, like, like the viruses. Okay, good. Now let's start with details on the enemy with the virus, yeah? Coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, as it was baptized, uh, is coronavirus is airborne, which means that it's transmitted mainly by the air. And you see scientific studies which prove this, and it's, it's a problem with the aerosols, with the, the droplets. It was a video published um, a few weeks before in, uh, in uh, Japan. They found out that uh, when we cough or we speak loud or we sneeze, we eliminate big droplets, but they are landing like one meter near our body, more or less. But the problem is with the micro droplets because they can stay for hours in the air. So uh, these ones may contain the virus, but there are very good solutions against this. See here in this image, the droplets containing virus in the air, so we can inhale. So, uh, uh, this kind of uh, the droplets can uh, affect many, many people. Of course, uh, the virus, when the virus comes on objects, we can touch the objects and then we can uh, get the virus through the nose, through the mouth, through the skin of the face. Now, ideally is to destroy the virus before entering the body, okay? Or very, very soon, uh, before it's possible massive multiplication. So do not wait uh, too long. So it, uh, you know, prophylaxis prevention is much easier than the treatment. So it must uh, de destroy the virus outside. So how to destroy the virus before it comes into our body? We have several methods, air ventilation. This is a good one from Japan. Just open the windows and the door and these droplets, micro droplets from the air will be diluted first and then eliminated through the air ventilation. Sunlight, ultraviolet lamps, heat, air purifying devices. So air ventilation, like I told you, this is the cheapest possible methods to get rid of the virus. So, you know, in the morning when we wake up uh, in our bedroom, the air, it's a bit like stagnant, it's not of a good quality. And when we open the window and it comes fresh air, we feel much, much better, okay? So uh, ultraviolet destroys also most viruses and bacteria from the air. So it's a good idea to go under direct sunlight, 
but we must go outside, not inside, because the, the windows, the, the glass of the window blocks the ultraviolets. So you need to go outside. Uh, then exposure to ultraviolet lamps, like in surgical uh, rooms, surgery rooms. Uh, we can buy eventually such a device if we are, if we are in, um, in fear. And they are not very complicated. They have also in the surgery rooms, as I told you. So they can be used ultraviolets. Then heat, it's also a very good method. And in some hotels I saw in several countries, they put these heaters in the bathrooms, for example, and the temperature over 28, 30 degrees Celsius will uh, make the droplets to, uh, to go down and to, to dry because the water will evaporate. And if the heat is long enough, the proteins from the virus will denaturate, it will change. Air purifying devices, the, you can buy such things. There are also smaller versions just to clean the air from the room, like I told you before. But also we have other uh, very, very good possibilities in apitherapy is just to, to heat, uh, to use the heat and the propolis in form of propolizers. Okay, so we have here like uh, these devices from Italy, these three devices here, which has, uh, have prop, uh, propolis inside, purified propolis. And they, uh, they have a special electrical part here which heat the propolis to about 80 degrees Celsius. And the propolis aromas, the essential oils and volatile substances and so on, they go inside the air. So it's combination of a heat and uh, ventilation and propolis. So you can put these propolis in the living room, but ideally is also in the bedroom where you sleep. You can put even two or three such propolizers in the corners of the room. Ideally as close as possible to your, your uh, face. Now, like you sleep here on this part of the bed, you should have the device here as close as possible to you. Then if there is also a propolizer for the cars. It's excellent because it will propolize the air inside the car. So practically the car will become like a sauna uh, with propolis, which is very, very good. So uh, propolis will block the toxins from the car, from outside the car, the pollutants from outside, you see but also it'll clean the air of bacteria and viruses. So practically your car can become like a, like a sauna, <laughs> traveling sauna and a healing uh, kind of room. Proposting from Slovenia, it's another type of device made in Slovenia. So you put here a raw propolis, ideally on top of some beeswax after the beeswax becomes liquid. And then you can also propolize the air from the room. Okay, uh, same, same principle. You can put it in the living room in the bedroom. Then other methods to destroy the virus before it comes to the body, chemical methods. We already know, soap, disinfectants, alcohol, acids, which change or denaturate the proteins. Chemical methods, you know, you saw on TV every day. Okay, so how to, to block the virus to enter the body? One is to use propolize, uh, propolizer with breathing masks. So not only just in the room, like in the room, like I showed you, just in the room, Okay, but also to take it directly into the lungs, so into the nose. So first we take the propolis in the nose, in the nose mucosa, the throat, the larynx, the bronchi, the lungs will be better protected because the propolis creates a kind of um, a liniment, a kind of um, like um, a protective layer, which does not allow the virus to come so easy onto the cells. A very good idea from Romania, from Mrs. Alina Varadi, from the northwestern part of Romania. She made a propolized cabin, like a mini room. So she made like a very small room like this one in wood. And she puts inside, it has this small table and then several corners. And in each corner, she put a propolizer. Okay, like, like this one you see here from Slovenia or propolizer from Italy. So the people go inside the room. It's like a sauna, yes? Same more or less like in the car, like I showed you before, but inside a, a room, the people can watch, uh, can answer to their uh, messages and so on and so on, okay? So um, here is uh, uh, the structure of the virus. And here is very, very important to understand that uh, each virus, even Ebola virus, HIV, HIV virus, all viruses, they have some Achilles heels, they have some, some problems. And uh, 
uh, we uh, can look to this. What is the, this uh, weakness of the virus? The main weakness of the virus is in its proteins. So the virus has protein outside and protein inside. And the protein we know from the chemistry, from the elementary school, they can be destroyed by heat. Okay, so um, I'll explain you later. Then the virus attaches to the cells by attaching to these receptors, angiotensin converting enzyme to receptors. Okay, so it comes like this, the virus, this is the cell, this is the receptor here. And then it locks to this receptor. And then you see here the virus locking to the, the receptor of the cell. And then it goes into the cell. If the receptor is not blocked, if we succeed to block the receptor, then the virus cannot enter. Or it will enter in much lower amount, much less number of viruses will enter into the cells. When they enter into the cells, they start to do the damage and they start to multiply and they cause a ki all kinds of problems, uh, sometimes killing the cell. But if the cell is powerful enough, if it has enough antiviral substances and enough antioxidants and enough substances to regenerate these uh, special uh, organites, which are inside organelles, which are inside the cell, then the cell can survive. Okay, so we can, uh, we can compare the spike proteins from the virus with a key and the angiotensin converting enzyme to receptors with a lock. So uh, lock and key mechanism. <laughs> so the, the, the lock is here, uh, which the virus can enter into the cell only if it's open here. So as I said, if we can block this, we have two options. One is to destroy the key, like we use the heat to destroy the virus or we use all the other elements from outside. Uh, uh, chemicals, uh, soap, disinfectants, ultraviolets, and so on and so on. Or we block the, the lock, and we can block the lock with propolis. And propolis and the quercetin, and there are several other things like medicinal plants which can block the receptors. And then this uh, entrance of the virus will be stopped. So the virus cannot enter inside the cells anymore. Okay. So symptoms, signs, and pathogenesis uh, in the body uh, caused by the virus. So virus uh, enter in the body mainly by the nose, uh, by breathing. We discussed before through aerosols. And uh, this causes possibly some symptoms like rhinorrhea, which is running nose, mucus, nasal obstruction. The nose is blocked. We cannot breathe easily through the nose. Anosmia, which is a lack of smell or sinusitis, when these uh, nearby rooms uh, of the nose, they are uh, inflamed, so causing sinusitis. And another possible problem is headache. When the virus can go through the nose, there are special areas here, uh, the olfactive nerve, which is, is related to the, to, to the brain. Uh, the virus can go directly to the brain sometime and can cause headache. Another uh, possible symptom is conjunctivitis, like the virus goes from the nose through a special channel, this uh, duct here, lacrimal duct, like the, the tears, they go to the, to the eyes and vice versa. So virus can come also to the eyes and cause a viral conjunctivitis. But we have also solutions for each of these symptoms. For example, here we can use honey, propolis, royal jelly, diluted, microfiltered as eye drops. The symptoms lack of, uh, in the case of mouth, uh, it's lack of taste, ageusia, or when the virus comes to the pharynx, and this is a common symptom of uh, COVID-19, this is uh, uh, the dry, uh, sore throat, and uh, later on, it causes in the bronchi, it causes the dry cough, okay? So this is specific because usually uh, normal flu is with uh, expectoration, it's a wet cough. But in the case of COVID-19, at the beginning, at least it's a dry cough, okay? Now, a very, very, very important image here to understand how, why our B products are good. So uh, you find in the internet about the structure of the respiratory epithelium. So you see here the, the lungs, the trachea, and this section here, it's enlarged in this part. So 
Well, if you look clearly, here downwards are the lungs, and here these cells, they have this special cilia, cilia, it's like hairs if you want, they are moving like, uh, like the wheat in the wind, if you want, or like the trees in the wind, and they are, in, in between them, it's mucus, see here, mucus layer, it's a very soft mucus, normally, when we are healthy. And the particles which are coming inside our lungs, for example, when we, when we are uh, smoking or we stay in a polluted environment, like they stayed in Wuhan in China or in Lombardia in Italy and New York and cities and so on, or if it's a virus directly, when the virus comes, the virus cannot go directly to the cells. So the virus can, must go through the mucus and must uh, go through this barrier, this blockade done by the cilia, okay? So, the trick here is, if we have healthy cilia cells, these cilia cells are healthy, they can eliminate out the viruses. And the elimination is done through coughing and uh, through expectoration. And these are very, very good, uh, very healthy uh, ways of the lungs to clean itself from the virus. We should not block the coughing. Some, some doctors may think to give uh, anti-cough uh, chemical drugs, this will be a disaster because, you know, like the smokers in the morning, they expectorate the very, very black um, um, mucus from the lungs. So this is done because of these cells, okay? So we need to focus in our uh, healing methods on these cells. And we can do it with propolizers, with inhalations, uh, propolis and so on. Here we have another drawing with the structure of the, this, uh, this uh, tissue. And the idea is that each of these uh, cells, absolutely each of these cells, they need uh, a lot of nutrients, they need antioxidants, they need vitamins and so on and so on to be happy and to work properly to eliminate the, the toxins. And one major, one important cell here is the goblet cell, which creates the mucus. And this, this cell is present here. You see here, goblet cell and uh, between this, like this one, this one, and they create the mucus, a soft mucus. And the same is in the digestive tract because mucus is important for the body when it's in normal amount and it's enough fluid to be eliminated easily. And again, here another drawing with this uh, cilia from the cells which are eliminated by moving they are eliminating all kinds of particles, viruses, bacteria, dust, uh, and so on and so on. So if the cilia doesn't work properly, we may get things like this one, like in, in emphysema, the mucus cannot be eliminated. It's something very, very bad, <laughs> but this is the reality. So uh, in case of COVID-19, things similar like this one can happen. One of the very, very easy, very good method, which was used also in the first world war, against the Spanish flu was linden flowers in form of tea. And when linden flowers are using, used together with linden honey, then they create a very soft, uh, very fluid mucus, uh, which I, is eliminated easier from the lungs. So it's a very good idea to use it. Against dry cough also is the propolis in form of propolis extract without alcohol here, you see, or a soft propolis extract like here with uh, olive oil. This helps also against dry cough. Alcoholic propolis uh, in, may increase the dry cough. So alcohol is drying. So this one should be not used so much, only in nebulizations. There are also many uh, plants which are used against uh, the symptom like licorice, which is also antiviral. And of course, warm water. Uh, during COVID-19, before, during, after, never drink cold water because cold water, it's, it's a disaster, uh, disaster for the immune system and for the lungs. Also turmeric, curcuma longa, it's used a lot in Asia against uh, such problems. And if we look to countries which are using a lot of these uh, uh, natural products like Nepal, India, Thailand, and so on, they have very, very low uh, uh, number of COVID-19 uh, deaths. Okay, when the, the virus comes into the lungs, very deep into the lungs, they reach the alveoli, very deep. As I said, they may attach to the cells, okay? And they can cause in the lungs dyspnea, chills, fever, myalgia, fatigue, 
loss of appetite, hemoptysis, and so on. And the most dangerous is this microthrombosis in the lungs, which creates lack of oxygen. Okay, so um, let's see how we can even eliminate this. The shortness of breath, the dyspnea, we can use uh, B products because you can open the airways with propolis, especially because propolis. It's also with B venom, it's bronchodilatatory, and propolis dries the excessive humidity, or the serum and so on, which is in the lungs. So um, we can use honey and propolis to honey as, uh, as um, uh, mucolytic, like it makes the mucus more fluid, okay? And also we can use B venom to activate the blood flow and we can put it on the acupuncture points. And you see here some of these acupuncture points to activate the blood flow in the heat inside the lungs to make the mucus more fluid and to eliminate it easier and to breathe better. So these points here you can use, yes? Like governing vessel 25, which is very important bronchodilatatory. Here is the tip of the nose. It's a bit funny, but it's a very active point. Governing vessel 26, this one, we can use it also. Uh, gallbladder 20, Feng Chi, also very good on the neck. These points are alarm points, lung one and lung two, which activates the energies in the lungs and the functionality in the lungs. And uh, conceptual vessel 17, it's also a point which acts on the whole uh, lungs functioning. Also this point, large intestine four, is very, very good against laryngeal spasm. Sometimes the people, they have a spasm, so they can use on this point. And then other points here on the back between the shoulder bladder, urinary bladder 13, Fei Shu, Fei Shu, <laughs> and then urinary bladder 52, uh, Ji Shi as a acupuncture point. This one uh, acts on the lungs directly and this one acts on the adrenal glands, which creates adrenaline and cortisol and both they are against the inflammation, against the uh, excessive uh, bronchospasm and so on. And also there are acupuncture points on the ears, micro acupuncture points, like here the lungs area, it's inside the ear, so you can put B venom cream in this area too. Okay, so then uh, of course honey and also propolis you can use for nebulization. And uh, one of our participants here in the room is Professor Mamdouk. He used a lot uh, honey uh, for treating of patients, of children, especially with uh, asthmatic conditions. And the asthma, it's like bronchospasm, bronchoconstriction, and honey and propolis can open this bronchia. Another cause is the chills. People are uh, having the, the chills, <laughs> the, the cold, and they protect against the cold. And uh, chills, uh, it's good at the beginning of the disease because the people are taking measures to protect against the loss of heat. And this heat, which, is, which stays in the body, helps the fever, and the fever will help the healing. So fever, it's a very, very good thing. Then another symptom which may come is my, myalgia, myalgia, which is uh, pains in the muscles, fatigue, because we have lack, lack of oxygen usually, loss of appetite, we can give bipolar and real jelly plus honey. And another major uh, sign, which is a very dangerous one, if it's too advanced, is hemoptysis. But propolis and honey can help. Propolis, you know, it's anti-hemorrhagic. It heals the, the broken capillaries and honey can help too. So if it is viral pneumonia, we need to use all B products uh, through the lungs, but also through the mouth, under the tongue, suppositories, through the skin, all anatomical ways. Against microthrombosis in the lungs, we can use B venom oxymel, which is a special kind of... Uh, vinegar honey. Uh, honey itself has acids uh, which dilutes the thrombus and organic acids can also dilute the thrombus. And uh, a few ideas about the, how fever appears in the body, why it's important. Uh, uh, we should not eliminate the fever. And now here uh, again about idea about capillary fragility which uh, attacks the capillaries and cause one of the signs of capillary fragility you can see like here or when you get a small hit on the, on the skin and then you get the, the blue skin. This is a sign of capillary fragility or the, the gums are bleeding too easy. So lack of vitamin C and polyphenols. If we give to these people enough vitamin C and enough polyphenols 
and we diminish the smoking, the stress, and so on, we can heal this capillary fragility, okay? And people with diabetes have usually the capillaries fragile, they break very easy, and when it's high blood pressure on top of this, of course, it increases the risk of hemorrhages, including the stroke, okay? So here, uh, a few ideas, camphorol and quercetin, there are substances which are preventing this kind of uh, platelet aggregation, it's anti-inflammatory effect, science. Gastrointestinal symptoms, the main one may be diarrhea or vomiting, but here, these symptoms, again, they are good symptoms. Of course, the patient, they get uh, scared, but diarrhea, it's a way the body is using to eliminate the virus. It's the same thing like when you have an intoxication with bacteria. We ate something which was uh, not good quality, and then we get uh, this salmonellosis or any other uh, bad bacteria in our uh, uh, small intestine or large intestine we get very strong diarrhea. Diarrhea is very good to eliminate the virus. It, sh it should not be blocked unless it is too excessive. Muscle pain when the virus arrives to the muscles. This happens also in normal flu. Then uh, one other problem which may come is when the virus goes inside the, the blood vessels and it may attack the red blood cells and it causes problems in the hemoglobin the hemoglobin is um, uh, it's split it and uh, then it goes mu too much uh, uh, iron into say, the blood and we get ferritin. Ferritin is one molecule which transports the, the iron and uh, this is not a good thing. But again, the destruction of the red blood cells can be replaced, can be regenerated. Well, once the cells, red blood cells anyway, they die after about 120 days. So they are constantly regenerated. So if we give enough um, B products, especially royal jelly and bipolar and propolis, even if they are destroyed in large numbers, they can be regenerated. Okay, here's some science also related to the platelet aggregation, how it's happening, uh, the aggregation, the platelet formation, the, the thrombus formation. Okay, okay, so uh, this, uh, this uh, problem with the oxygen transportation and then the thrombosis of peripheral blood vessels. Okay, some science here more. Okay, microvascular uh, uh, theory. Uh, and this is um, uh, one important thing because many months when the disease started, COVID-19 started, the people focused uh, almost only on the lungs but they realized afterwards in Italy, they, they proved this, that uh, it's thrombosis, which is one of the important factor, not only the lungs disease. Okay, another thing which can happen, blood thickening. If the, the uh, people are dehydrated, they do not drink enough uh, fluids, then may have the blood too thick, and then this may cause problems, like you see here, it may cause a brain stroke. Okay, then endotheliitis, when the virus attach attack here, the, the internal part of the arteries I told you before, and here again, attacking the endothelial cells, and the endothelial cells have also AC2 receptors, okay? So uh, we need a very strong blood vessel system, uh, but which must be also flexible and elastic to protect ourselves against these uh, problems. I already told you, the blood vessels may be tonified, the structure may be tonified if you have vitamin C and propolis, which are both stimulating the production of collagen. And the collagen is the one which maintains the strength of the arteries, arterioles, and so on. Vitamin C again. So here are a few ideas about the hypertension. People having hypertension, they are more exposed to, to problems because this uh, uh, blocks the blood flow and may cause uh, brain damage, like uh, like a stroke. Okay, good. Okay, I told you already about the heart endocardium and the muscle when the virus attacks this part of the heart. But even if the heart is attacked, we can help also the heart. We know there are so many articles about apitherapy in cardiology. So here we can use uh, all B products. Now just a list here, a short list of the symptoms which are done uh, possibly by the, the virus, sore throat, dry cough, dyspnea, and so on and so on. So we must uh, use B products to block each of these 
symptoms or signs, ideally to block all of them simultaneously. Okay, now flu versus COVID-19. At the beginning, many people said, oh, it's just the flu, but uh, there are differences. One of them is that the people are losing their taste or smell. And this uh, problem with the thrombosis is higher than in case of the flu. Bacteria, no, the doctors, when they do the differential diagnosis, it may be not only the virus, but also bacteria. And some theory says that the virus can hide inside bacteria, okay? The bacteria cause pneumonia. And here you have some, some symptoms which are specific for bacterial cause pneumonia, like tachypnea, central cyanosis, and here are other symptoms. You can study these uh, slides uh, later when I will give you by email uh, this, uh, these slides, okay? Okay, now shall we use symptomatic treatment with chemical drugs, inhibiting the symptoms, like uh, allopathic medicine is doing uh, usually. And my, my answer, uh, like all the time, is not, because the symptoms and the signs of a disease are our friends, not our enemies. Rhinorrhea, nasal obstruction, coughing, expectoration, and so on, help our body to protect against the penetration of the virus or to eliminate the virus as soon as possible. So we should not blindly suppress these uh, symptoms. We must listen to the body and we must make a detailed list with all the causes of the causes. And then we can make a treatment protocol. We should be integrative, helping every single cell in the body to function properly. So we should not work only on the nose or only on the lungs, only on the, the blood vessels, but on all cells in the body because they work all of them to maintain us uh, healthy. Now, uh, fever is usually our friend, not our enemy. Uh, we know that when we have infections, not only us, all mammals all over the world, even, even fish, <laughs> uh, they increase the body temperature because an increased body temperature uh, attacks the microorganisms, the bad microorganisms, it helps the immune system. Only a few situations when we must decrease the, the uh, fever, mental confusion, convulsions or exacerbated acute symptoms or sepsis. Okay, so these are exceptions. Of course, we diminish the fever, but we should not diminish the fever with chemical drugs because they attack finally also the, uh, the liver and uh, we may get in more trouble afterwards, but we should use physical methods, okay? Like um, a few other uh, things, like in the hospitals, they use ventilators. They used at the beginning, I hope nowadays they, they diminish this uh, thing, mechanical ventilators, which blows the air. And it is very difficult to create a very, very good pressure. Usually it's higher than normal pressure because the doctors wants the oxygen to go inside the body. But this higher uh, pressure of the air, which will make explode the, like a balloon, when you have a pressure here, like in balloon, you come with the aggressor and it explodes and the membrane of the lungs of the alveoli will break and then it will cause micro hemorrhages and the people dies because of ventilators. And uh, I remember one, uh, one presentation from a doctor from Germany. They saw that ventilators are killing more the people than when they use normal oxygen uh, administration through the normal uh, tubes. Okay, so uh, uh, fever is our friend, not our enemy. So uh, we should not diminish it because we can kill the viruses and the bacteria. And by the way, of the fever, uh, the temperature, we know that the viruses are destroyed usually by a temperature of 56 degrees Celsius uh, or more. And we can get this kind of temperature in our body if we do inhalations, if we go into a sauna, uh, if we stay uh, 10 minutes or longer into a, a warm bath, like 41 degrees Celsius. And when you have fever, like one, two weeks uh, or so, uh, this increased heat will uh, damage the structure of the viruses and bacteria too, and will improve the, the speed of the white blood cells like you see here, which is very, very important because the white blood cells must travel very fast uh, through the lymph, through the blood, through the tissues to block the viruses before they multiply. Okay, so uh, we, increase the increase, uh, we need to increase the blood flow also in the bone marrow and thus the production of stem cells, white, red blood cells and platelets. Okay, 
Uh, the chemical drugs like Tylenol, Panadol, Acetaminophen, Paracetamol, you look in the science, uh, they destroy the glutathione. And glutathione is a very powerful antioxidant which is present in the cells. And if we do not have enough antioxidant in the cells, the cells are destroyed much easier by the viruses. Okay. So, uh, as I said, the, the chemical drugs, they, they do liver damage. They are not uh, uh, good to be used. And then here it's, I found an article, excellent article. I was so happy when I saw it. I found it because I'm using fever as a tool against infection for over 30 years. Myself too, whenever I have a, a problem, a viral or, or any, any infection in my body, I use fever, I increase my fever, my body temperature with all kinds of methods. And I found this article and one of the main conclusions they tested on animals and they found that if uh, you reduce the fever too soon, it increases the number of fatalities. So if somebody has a fever like 38, 30.5, 39, even 40, but there are absolutely no, no symptoms, no signs, analysis are okay, electroencephalogram is okay, and so on, we should not diminish the fever. We should allow the fever to do its job. Okay, if we diminish too soon, we'll allow the viruses and bacteria to multiply again, and we will block the immune system. Okay, I told you already when we should uh, decrease the fever, mental confusion, and or other neurological signs like convulsions. Okay, so we must be very cautious. And when a patient, let's say somebody from our family has COVID-19, we must stay near this person non-stop, day and night, day and night, day and night, we must make uh, the tours, uh, you know, uh, uh, shifts with our family members and uh, look for such uh, symptoms. And if they have no mental confusion, no neurological signs, we should maintain the fever until the fever is doing its job. And when we know that the fever has done its job, when it comes the sweating, when sweating comes, then it's the sign that the, the body can cool down. Okay. Good. Now, a few ideas about the fever inflammation. We know when a harmful thing enters in our body, it causes inflammation. So inflammation is a good thing because uh, this uh, thing here, this spike will be uh, like uh, not so uh, strongly connected to the tissues and can be eliminated. So the inflammation is okay. But the excessive inflammation, like excessive fever, as I said before, may destroy the, the healthy tissues which are around. So we must keep under the control the fever all the time with our B products, with other measures, measures just to burn the uh, dried wood, which is here in the center in this image, but not to dry the green grass, which is around, like the healthy cells around. And this, uh, this principle can be used in all kinds of diseases when you have inflammations. Uh, there are so many diseases uh, with inflammations. We can use this principle too like a strong inflammation, like in burns, okay? Or here is another example, uh, like if uh, the septicemia is too big, if uh, the people got gangrene and the gangrene was not treated properly, then they can go to sepsis, which is very, very micro bad microbes. Sorry for these lines, but uh, it's because of the transmission, I don't know. But we can heal this gangrene too with uh, B products. Here was used the propolis, honey, and essential oil. Okay, so what to do in case of fever? Enough warm fluids, uh, 42 degrees Celsius fluids orally through nasogastric tube or intravenous if it's necessary until the urine becomes clear and less smelly. Thermal protection against the loss of heat, warm clothes, warm room, like 27, 28 degrees Celsius. Then baby food in small amount, honey, royal jelly, bee bread, soaked seeds, and so on and so on. Uh, to have energy uh, quickly from the food, not lose energy by digesting process, okay? And um, now, generally speaking, as I said, we need to improve the function of the immune system. So let's focus on how to improve the uh, functioning of the immune system. We need to keep the comorbidities down, okay? We need to block the mechanism of action of the virus. Treatments here, we can use Nutrition, we can use vitamins, enzymes, essential amino acids, zinc, phytotherapy for substances like polyphenols, 
that reduces the excessive inflammation. You heard from TV so many times that the people are dying because of um, a cytokine cascade. But this cytokine cascade can be blocked by the plants and by the propolis. Happy therapy for nutrients, aromatherapy, antiviral, psychotherapy, sleep therapy, meditation, qigong, tai chi, yoga, pranayama can be used. Vitamin C, at least 3,000 milligrams a day. Vitamin D3, there is a lot of theory here. It's also very, very good. It uh, helps at least 3,000 enzymes in the body. So vitamin D3 is also important. Zinc is important. Selen is important. Okay. Okay. Now I go through the theory. Here you see the cells uh, of the immune system, which need a lot of things to function properly. I go, uh, it's just theory, uh, how they function. All B products can help the cells. All the organs are important to maintain each cell healthy and also the immune system. This D'Artagnan principle, which many of you know, uh, one for all and all for one, like each cells in the body works for one cell and one cell works for all the other cells in the body. Okay, so not just a, a limited kind of treatment. So the cells principle is I work for you all, <laughs> all of you must work for me too, okay? Um, okay, so each, each cell, each tissue in the body needs these categories of things. We describe these categories in uh, our book, uh, in French, uh, the book I wrote with my very good friend from France, Claudette Renal Cartabas. And uh, the idea is that if, if one of these elements is uh, missing, we cannot heal the people. Nutrition, a few ideas about this baby food. We need fresh molecules, very young molecules, not old molecules, that are easy to absorb in the mouth and digest in the, in the body. So raw egg yolk, soaked seeds, bee pollen, bee bread royal jelly, honey, fruit, vegetable juice, jo yogurt, something like this. So uh, bee pollen can be very easy digested. In it is digested, it's open in the large intestine, which is related to the immune system too. Honey, it goes directly into the blood almost with no, no problems of absorption. Bee bread and this kind of foods, which are very easy to digest. Soaked seeds, very, very healthy. And here you have a chart with how much time you need for each of these seeds to open, to, to be activated, to activate the enzymes inside. Uh, this is in German, but just to have an idea, so like six hours, you need to open this kind of uh, uh, seeds, cashew, you need six hours, and so on. But for the, the sunflower uh, seeds, you need uh, six hours or even less, sometimes even two hours are okay. So just put the seeds in water, allow them to soak, ideally for the night, and the next morning you can have very, very good, very easy to digest food. Okay. Then fish is also okay. It is very easy to digest. Yogurt is okay, ideally from the goat and kefir from the goat, honey too, but no such a food. And I remember now a very good doctor from Germany. He, he um, told the story of his grandfather, which was also a doctor. And he was in the first world war and he has healed 115 soldiers, which came uh, to his hospital and all the soldiers were with uh, Spanish flu. So uh, theoretically, all of them could have died, but the, he saved all of them by vegetarian diet, by heat, bus with a uh, temperature of 41 degrees Celsius, and with uh, linden flower tea, which increased the expectoration. So um, we should avoid also foods which creates mucus, like this one, so such food uh, creates too much mucus in the lungs, and then the, the, the immune system cannot work properly. And then uh, here, this kind of foods uh, is much better. Mucus blocks the respiration, so we do not get oxygen. Okay, now for our bee products, like how much honey to take uh, during this COVID-19? I would say at least one milliliter per kilogram body weight per day. So if somebody is 80 kilogram body weight, it needs 80 milliliter of honey per day. Okay, so uh, with a lot of warm water. So honey, we can take huge amounts, even one kilogram in a day, but we need to drink a lot of water to dilute it and to be easier to be absorbed. Uh, honey and spicy foods, which increase the heat in the body and activates the immune system, like cinnamon, ginger, onions, garlic. Onions, by the way, are very rich in quercetin, 
and you saw quercetin is against the virus and also blocks the histamine in the, in the blood. Magnesium, it's also very important because uh, 325 enzymes in the, our body are using magnesium and also the heart, the brain. So um, most of the people which come to emergency units, they are deficient in magnesium. Where we find magnesium? Uh, rose hip fruits, pollen, cacao, soaked sunflower, sesame, millet seeds, beans, lentils, vegetables, bananas, avocado, mollusks, crustaceans, shrimp, shells, all of them, if we take them with honey, the absorption is, will be better. Of course, you can take also magnesium from the pharmacy. And here you have a recipe which you can use, pollen 10 grams, cacao powder 5 grams, soaked sunflower seeds 5 grams, and so on, if I, you'll have this recipe. So this combination will allow uh, enough magnesium in our body. Then honey and foods are rich in enzymes, which helps the regeneration of the body. Vitamin C, as I said, which fluidify the blood, the lymph, and the uh, organic soft acids. This, these are very important because they inhibit the platelet aggregation. Remember that many patients, uh, old people, they get thrombus disease, um, this uh, thrombosis, and they die because of this peripheral thrombosis usually or in the lungs, but organic acids can block uh, this uh, thrombosis. So it will undone the thrombosis, like it will make the blood again fluid. Where we find organic acids? In our honey, we have formic acid, lactic acid, gluta um, gluconic acid, many acids are present in honey itself. That's why honey it has a pH, acidic pH. Then we can get honey vinegar, which is we allow honey to to fermentate and to go to vinegar phase. Bee bread contains lactic acid. Propolis has also inside many acids, okay? And also we can use oxymel, which is honey vinegar plus other substances, herbs and so on. We can also take honey separately and vinegar separately. Ideally, apple cider vinegar. Honey and lemon juice. Lemon juice is very, very good also because it contains uh, citric acid, which is also against thrombus. Of course, we can use medicine from the hospital. In the hospitals, they will uh, use anyway the thrombolytic substances like cumarin and so on and so on. But we can help this uh, before the medicine, chemical medicine is necessary. So things like this with organic acids will help the fluidity in the, in the blood, also in the liver. We know when the liver is too full of fats, if we take uh, lemon juice with honey, then we feel much better, nausea goes away and so on. So this will clean uh, the whole, all cells in the body and will allow us to have a better blood flow and lymphatic flow. So the immune system will travel, uh, travel faster into the body to kill the viruses. Now, how can we use honey in COVID-19? Intranasal, we can uh, just put the honey, uh, honey drops into the nose, gargling for the throat and larynx especially. So we can clean the throat of viruses by doing just gargling with honey. And also old style inhalations, we just put honey in warm water at about 80 degrees Celsius, and we can inhale for 10, 15 minutes about this warm uh, vapors with uh, enriched with uh, honey. Nebulization at the beginning, but more often three, five times per day uh, when coughing or dyspnea and pneumonia occurs. Intravenous method also is possible, like uh, Professor Mamdouh Abdul Rahman said. Okay, so we have also here uh, orally administration of honey, sublingual, intrarectal, intravaginal, on the skin. Practically, we should use all anatomical ways to uh, allow honey to enter into our body. Now, propolis of, uh, is raw propolis, five to two grams per day. Okay. Uh, a European kind of propolis, temperate climate, but also Brazilian propolis is very good, it's spicy. Uh, red propolis from Brazil, there are many types of propolis, Cuba and so on and so on. Almost all of them are, have antibacterial properties. And now again, we can use propolis intranasal, diluted water and oil propolis extract. Gargling, we can use with warm water and honey and also propolis extract. Propolis tincture in inhalations, we can add. Nebulization, we add into the, the solution. This is a method from uh, Romania, from Dr. Dona Kojokaru. We, we can use uh, uh, this uh, nebulization with uh, about half milliliter honey, half milliliter propolis tincture, 
a three milliliter physiological serum or saline solution. Uh, we can increase, of course, uh, uh, when you need more amounts, uh, we can double uh, the amount of each ingredient. Propolis we can use also orally, like capsules, raw tablets, sublingual, intradectal, intravaginal. We can use on all anatomical ways, including with uh, electrophoresis, ultrasounds, uh, if it's necessary. In China, I learned last year a very good way of using beeswax. Beeswax uh, is not only good against the hay fever, but also beeswax can accumulate a lot of heat and transmit to the body. So uh, there is a method with uh, uh, propolis, uh, which is added into the beeswax. You see, like it becomes like black, and then it's heated, this uh, uh, wax, and it can uh, transmit the heat to the body. And we can use also this special thing here, which is connected to electricity. It has some electrical resistance and maintains the heat for about 30 minutes. And this will make the lungs uh, very uh, nice, warm and good functioning and uh, protect against the, the viruses. Okay, so I explained here how to do it. Now, Bihai Vare Spa Preventative and Treatment. We know from Austria, they start with the devices, like inhaling the Bihai Vare. Then you know in Germany, it's um, a Bikura system from Jürgen Schmidgen. One very good system. It's a very modern one with a special kind of tube special kind of absorption of the air. And here it's about one, two sessions per day. You'll say that beehive air in COVID-19, it's, um, it's something which nobody will use in a hospital, is true. But once the, before the people go to the hospital or when they come out of the hospital, and if it's not, like now it's already a bit warmer time, uh, they can use also the beehive air because beehive air ha has many molecules which are helping those cells which are inside the bronchi and the, uh, the alveoli. Royal jelly, it's also very good for various reasons. Royal jelly itself is antiviral, not only antimicrobial and antifungal. Uh, there are several clinical cases where royal jelly was excellent. So, but you need high amounts of royal jelly. So like two to five milliliter of royal jelly, ideally extracted directly into the syringe, up to 12 times per day. And uh, one, one spectacular case was uh, in, uh, two spectacular cases were in Germany with viral meningitis and COVID-19, when it was used a high amount of royal jelly uh, in two days, and the people got healed. Okay, apilarnil is the drone larvae for the stem cells for the micronutrients. Also, you can get two, three milliliter up to six times per day. Pollen, you have also here the, the amount, bee bread also the amount. Uh, explain how the bees are making bee bread. Bee venom, we can use on acupuncture points to activate the blood flow in the immune system. And here is one drawing from only one article on melitin and viruses. You see melitin is the main substance in bee venom, which can destroy, can destroy so many different viruses, including the HIV virus. So uh, uh, this is a very powerful tool which can, uh, can be used. And this may explain why the beekeepers they have such no COVID-19 until now, only one case all over the world. Let's start with more details on propolis. Why is propolis so good? You know the theory, I'll go fast. Composition, 300 different substances, flavonoids, antioxidant power of the propolis against free radicals, against inflammation to block the cascade of cytokines. Here is what is doing free radicals inside the body. Uh, also, in case of uh, COVID-19, many free radicals are created, okay, uh, including uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome, okay, present in COVID-19. Uh, glutathione, it's affected if we don't have enough uh, antioxidants also in the body. Energy in honey, oxygen, which is needed. Okay, so I go pretty fast. What is mitochondrion? Heat fever can be used, essential amino acids, enzymes. Okay, here is one element I want to, to, to stress a bit here to, to explain a bit more. Here is a white blood cell, <laughs> although it's colored in red, but it's a white blood cell. And when it's a virus uh, around, the uh, white blood cell comes and eat the, uh, just phagocyte, uh, it, it, uh, eat the, the virus. The virus enters inside. And then the white blood cells 
with special enzymes destroy the virus or destroy bacteria. Okay, now in this destruction, the enzymes are affected. So uh, the white blood cells, they need stand constantly to regenerate the enzymes. They need enzymes from outside or to produce enzymes. But for this, they need a lot of substances. And also in this process of destruction of the virus, there are a lot of free radicals created. So, and uh, uh, if the, there are too many free radicals, the free radicals will destroy the white blood cell itself. So that's why the white blood cells, they need huge amounts of antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene, provitamin A, polyphenols, and so on and so on, selen and so on and so on, to be protected, yes? So um, uh, if we maintain this immune system, especially the macrophages and the neutrophils in good shape, and they have enough antioxidants, they'll proper, uh, function properly. So no antioxidants, no proper function of the immune system. And I, I, I say a few words here. Uh, I am still shocked to see all mass media, main mass media, the United States, uh, everybody, all uh, occidental countries, they speak about, uh, there is no treatment of COVID-19, no treatment. Uh, they do not mention the antioxidants. They do not mention the food supplements. They do not mention anything to improve the immune system. They just say that only the vaccine will heal the humanity, which is a huge, huge, I would say criminal mistake, because if you do not give to the population these kind of things, you allow them to die um, without any, any explanation. Okay, here is some uh, uh, theory about antiviral substances from, from propolis, like cafe acid, quercetin, luteolin, beta udesmol, benzyl alcohol, which can be found also in the propolizers, and so on. So just I go quickly here, antimicotic properties, because sometimes the people may give also mycosis, giardia, malaria, trichomonas, parasites can be also together. All diseases of itis can be treated with propolis. The wound healing, you see also healing very fast in only 13 days with propolis against inflammation. Uh, propolis overall improves the blood fluidity, it's antithrombotic. Okay, again, theory, quercetin antiviral, strengthens the capillaries, which is very important in COVID-19, and also antitumoral for those old people which may have also tumors. Then a lot of theory about why is quercetin is good. I go fast. Okay, blocks the IC2 receptor. Okay, modulation. Okay, virus weakening. Okay, so quercetin, it's one important flavonoid and it affects, uh, it blocks this allergy mechanism and so on. Okay, blood pressure. So this is just for only one substance. Imagine that you have hundreds of substances in propolis in B products, which are having similar kind of effects. Pinosembrin also, antibacterial, antifungal. Galangin, a KP, caffeic acid phenethyl ester. And now there are companies, laboratories, which are making combinations of propolis and medicinal plants and combine com combination of these things which are antiviral. Like here you see, caffeic acid also it's antiviral. Indications and uses of propolis, all these diseases against the, the hemoptysis, against inflammations, here is another uh, very good method from Ecuador. I learned it two years ago, just to put inside the masks propolis. Okay, and then you can use this Valsalva method to allow more propolis to enter into the, the lungs if you don't have inflammation in the lungs. You can put propolis here inside or like uh, Professor Mamdouh, very good practical method in a plastic sachet. You can put raw propolis, a fresh one, and you fix it on the internal part of the mask and you can have it all day long. Contraindications limits of propolis, yes. People uh, may be allergic to propolis, may have intolerance to propolis. I told you that propolis in increases the blood fluidity. So it, you must be cautious when we, uh, the people are using also anticoagulants. Uh, propolis may diminish the blood pressure. Uh, that's why it acts on this AC2 receptors. But a person which has already low blood pressure, we must be cautious when we give propolis or people having organs transplanted already, uh, uh, they should be cautious also with propolis. Normally, they should not take it in the first one, two years. So administration methods through all anatomical ways, as I said. Here is about the doses. 
but uh, here is a uh, uh, case of acute problem. It's better to go through this system. When it's low symptoms, like uh, healthy people, we can go like this, uh, but better is to go pretty fast with high dose of all B high products, okay? And then uh, you have here internal administration, external administration. I told you quickly, uh, now water propolis extract, alcohol extract, oil butter extract for propolis we can use as liquids, as solids, capsules, tablets, okay? As liquids again here with saline solution as semi-solids like nasal creams, which we can put in the nostrils or ointments or as a very fine powder. Pipette, nasal drops. Here uh, with the, we can spray, there are the companies which are making water propolis extracts, which we can use as a spray, nasal sprays. Also throat spray, it's very, very easy, very practical. You just buy such a bottle, you adapt this kind of uh, thing here. And then of course you put inside your solution with propolis. Honey propolis solution, some royal jelly will be also very good. We can add also green propolis like you see here. And there are many other ways to use uh, the propolis through all uh, possibility. Eyes for eye administration, I told you, yeah, it is possible to do like we have had in Romania, eye drops with propolis 2%. Okay, so you need first a water propolis extract, then you microfilter it, and then you uh, have it about 2%, and then you can use it as eye drops. Of course, you need an ophthalmologist and you, you need to have no big problems in the eyes to use this kind of thing. Then uh, again, dosage on diseases. Here another uh, element of uh, general element like propolis is very, very rich in all kinds of substances. These are classes of substance, acids, vitamins, resins, flavonoids, pigments, carbohydrates, and so on and so on, enzymes. And um, antibiotics or antivirals, it's based on only one molecule. So antibiotic cannot heal, uh, it causes mostly problems. Um, very seldom it heals really the people uh, and it's not a good idea. Now, uh, same principle with one molecule. Unfortunately, they are using also for antivirals. They give only one molecule, which is very easy to produce and is very profitable, but it may, may cause uh, problems because you cannot with one molecule, destroy all viruses. Okay, so it's not a good idea. Propolis and honey have over 5,000 different compounds, which can be used. Okay, propolis preparations, water, alcohol, oil. You can join our classes, our courses on uh, propolis on Bihai products on api therapy. I go quickly through these ones, like how to make water extract. Uh, okay, somebody is making some noise. <laughs> Okay, butter extract, tinctures, and so on. So I go fast, we, we are not very far away from the finish of a presentation. Many different preparations based on propolis. Okay, I go through, again, I go through this one. And synthesis on apitherapy mechanism of action. We can block the uh, mechanism of action of the virus in the body. And don't forget to go to this uh, bibliography uh, to get the scientific articles. Again, I, I can make now a, a bit of advertising for our courses. You just go to epitherapy.com to the pages on courses or you send me just an email. Uh, I went a bit fast on this presentation, but we can discuss also through courses about this. And uh, here is uh, my location in uh, Europe, Romania, and I live near Bucharest and this uh, paradise here, bee paradise around the forest. Here is my bee house connected to my human house. And I just go quickly. Uh, I am here now in this uh, office and here we have nearby a clinic where the, most of the students which came to us, they stay at this clinic. And thank you very, 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 very much for your patience. Now I will uh, stop the share and uh, Please, uh, Reza, you can uh, block the recording because it was a big, big recording and I hope it will not uh, be too much for you. So go to the button on recording. And now uh, let's see your questions. Oof, one hour and 30 minutes. Speaking, 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 speaking. <laughs> okay.
Uh, now, thank you. Uh, yes, just Re I just um, stop it. Stop recording. It will re it was recorded. Yes, I uh, but I see here uh, the recording still goes. I just uh, push stop. Yes, uh, you push. Uh, look to the yeah, stop recording. I believe you must write this one. Yes, I 